Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I am Gary Gunderson. Everyone's favorite regulatory agency, the ATF, is up to their old tricks again and coming for your guns or wallets. So don't smile if you're fixing crooked teeth, because this time they're after braces and you don't want to be arrested for having a felonious smile. For those who don't know, the ATF proposed Rule 2021 R-08 is basically a stabilizing brace ban, but they aren't calling it that. They put together a worksheet and point system to determine if the brace you have is configured in a way to skirt past the regulations of the National Firearms Act. I've read the worksheet and crazy regulatory analysis, and though there are some videos out there, I haven't seen anyone actually look at individual firearms going through the worksheet to show how strict this is. So now we're going to play paper dolls with an AR to see if we can configure an AR pistol with a brace and still be legal under the proposed rule. We will go through a scenario to highlight how stupid and subjective this proposed rule is, but before I do that, I would like everyone to comment, comment, comment on my video, yes, but more importantly on this ATF rule. It can make a difference if you remember, they had a similar proposed rule under a year ago, and the outcry from the community led them to halt crushing the Second Amendment over the government boot, even if it was apparently very, very temporarily. I will put a link where you can comment in the description. You need to follow the rules of how to comment, including your real name, and without any curse words. Anything that fails to follow the comment rules can be thrown out. They have to respond to every rational argument made, and comments with individually written statements are the best, but at the very least, find a pre-filled form comment from Firearms Policy Coalition or some other group and use that to show the ATF what you think of this proposed rule. On to the worksheet. Keep in mind, if you reach the magic number four on this worksheet, right to jail. First, to even begin, you have to qualify with a weight of at least 64 ounces and a length between 12 and 26 inches to even consider using a brace. I'm sorry, Timmy, if you're too crippled to use a 62 ounce pistol without a stabilizing brace, you're just too disabled to use firearms, I guess. <laughs> For an example, we are going to use a Palmetto State Armory Shockwave pistol to see how it holds up. <laughs> Not that I know anyone who has anything like this because I don't associate with possible felons. First up, accessory design. And at the first characteristic, we are already in the territory of subjective determinations. We're going to show two scores based on interpretation, strict and generous. Being generous to ourselves as firearms owners, that's a zero, not based on a known design. Strict, I'd say a one, because it goes into more details in the actual proposed rule saying hardened surfaces count. Well, this plastic is a hard surface. So I could argue that counts as a shoulder stock design feature. Rear surface area. Again, very subjective. To achieve zero points here, you have to incorporate features to prevent the use as a shouldering device. I'm not aware of any pistols with spikes on the back, but that's the only thing I can vision that's zero points here, even with the generous interpretation. I would say one point. Minimize rear surface lacking features to discourage shouldering, because it is very minimal and somewhat uncomfortable to shoulder, I may be pushing strict when I say two here, because though I would argue it is minimized, there is rear surface useful for shouldering. If your comparison is against just a buffer tube, then this rear surface area is useful. If someone wanted to say that any material there is technically added and could be construed as increasing the rear surface for shouldering, I could hear that as an argument. I'm going to stick with two points for strict here, but could be three, and you're already done. I can't say it enough, this is very vague. Adjustability. Finally, an objective characteristic. This is easy and straightforward. This design has no adjustability and gets you zero points. Stabilizing support lists the different types of braces, which run from zero all the way to three points. This is clearly a fin type, and sold as is, there is no strap, which means if you're being generous, you pass this with three, or if you're being strict, you fail with five NFA breaking points. Right to jail, right away. Now we're on to section three. Let's say you're being generous to the ATF's goodwill, or you bought yourself a strap for the fin and ratcheted that down on your arm and went right under that four point line. 
because otherwise we are already done. Length of pole is less than 10 and a half inches on this model, so you get zero points. Attachment method is an airtight pistol buffer tube, but wait, this is CAC with adjustment notches. At least it's not vague. One point. On to stabilizing brace modification slash configuration. Sold as is, this is a solid two points. You could get a strap as we mentioned, but it must be long enough to function and cannot be made out of elastic material for some reason. Peripheral accessories, everyone's favorite reason to get an AR. This has no hand stop or secondary grips. And then we immediately get to sights. Presence of a rifle type backup slash flip up sights slash or no sights is one point. As sold, this has a front sight post, but no rear sight. The most readily available sights I think would qualify as either rifle type of backup or flip up sights. I'm honestly not sure what would be a pistol type of backup, or if that exists, or if you need to have a fixed sight in order to work, or why sights that have the ability to flip up has anything to do with it, or why the peripheral section exists at all. But guess what? That is a big old fourth point. You right to jail. This PSA pistol would be classified as an NFA item sold as is. But we want to succeed here too, so we're going to put a long, non-stretchy strappy boy on there and bring us down to a sweet, sweet two points to continue. Let's just pretend that PSA or the manufacturer of this fin type brace has the proper strap on all for their pistols and move on. No reflex sight or sight incompatible with one-handed fire, whatever that means. No bipod, and this does not weigh more than 120 ounces. Therefore, this configuration would be illegal. Because I did this worksheet based on my own knowledge before reading through the entirety of the proposed rule, in it, the ATF provided a worksheet example with this shockwave and considered it adjustable even though you screw and unscrew it in place with an Allen key. Therefore, at the furthest locked back position, you get three points for length of pull, and with the CAC buffer tube, you get another point for a big NFA4. Yeah. No matter the configuration, these fin type braces are going to be the same as putting a stock on your pistol. They also provide an example with the popular SBA3 brace. And it is also an NFA item in and of itself, no matter what configuration you try. By its design, the point system rules that it will be illegal. Believe it or not, Jim. However, the proposed rule include one version of an air pistol that actually gets past this worksheet. An SB Mini that gets three points in section two and three points in section three, which means it would be legal and the ATF would lose. I lost. I lost. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to lose. Let me see the script. We've done it. We went through the entire rule and worksheet, finding a proper configuration to follow the rules, but. Here's where the ATF gets tricky within this proposed rule. To quote, Even if a weapon accrues less than four points in each section, attempts by a manufacturer or maker to circumvent federal law by attaching purported stabilizing braces in lieu of shoulder stocks may result in classification of those weapons as rifles and short-barreled rifles. It continues, Therefore, efforts to advertise, sell, or otherwise distribute short-barreled rifles, which they just clarified was at their complete discretion, as such will result in a classification as a rifle regardless of the points accrued on the ATF worksheet 4999. But, but, the worksheet! Why have it at all? Seriously, they just said within this rule, even if you accrue less than four points, which is already vague, at their discretion, and the whole point system is of their own creation. Even if you configure it in such a way where you fall below the four points, they can just say, nah, that's an SBR. I could go on about how absurd this whole thing is, about how they got to their estimate of how many different gun owners have braces based upon the number of bump stocks that were turned in, which is bizarre anecdotal evidence, to which I can anecdotally say, I've seen a lot more braces than I ever saw bump stocks. I could also talk about how the ATF just incorporates an assumption that demands for braces was going to start going down anyways, 
with zero evidence to support this fact, but the important thing to remember is, this is a ban. I cannot stress it enough, this is an attempt to ban braces. Even if they don't enforce it completely at first, they left themselves the room to just say nope to anything that they purport to not be a stabilizing brace. That is why commenting is so important right now. The ATF acknowledges a minimum of 1.5 million gun owners with pistol braces. But it doesn't matter if you have one or not. You need to stand up for your rights and comment on this rule. Link is in the description. And while you're at it, subscribe to my channel and like the dang video. Come on, man. I hope this helped to shed some light on this dumb rule and maybe you learned something. Thanks for watching.